Hello, I'm Andrea Cantelli and welcome to this video breakdown for my latest project Strange Desert Formations in Gaia. This project is made up of uh, two terrains. The first and main terrain is this one that you can see here. And the second one is this. Let me load up the textures. And this is the final result. Now, in this video, I'll show you how I made these two terrains, uh, what no nodes I chose, and so on. So, let's get started with this terrain here, the main terrain. Now, this graph is quite uh, Mm, complex, not too much, but uh, this first row here is to make uh, this terrain that you, that you can see in the viewport. The second row is to make the second terrain, and then uh, these are the nodes for the textures. Let's start from, from the beginning. So I started out with a mountain node to make up the basic shape of uh, what I wanted to do. The mountain is a type type A and I, I also changed the parameters a little bit. Then I connected a displace node to add more details and also to make it larger larger. Then I wanted to make some uh, terrace because uh, it's a desert formation and terrace are quite common. I put one node, one terrace node and then another terrace node with uh, more uh, terraces. Then I wanted to make a um, quite strange um, shape, so I chose the wall node that, uh, um, as you can see, it displays the terrains uh, in a circular pattern, pattern. So this is before the wall and this is after the wall. I change some parameters, obviously, and I choose the spin type. Then, to make it look pretty, I put down an erosion node, and these parameters are more or less the default one, except maybe for the rock softness and duration, because I wanted to make this rock rock um, quite old and now after making this erosion I started making my uh, my dunes because I wanted um, I wanted the rocks to be submerged at least uh, um, some parts of, of them by the sand, so I created this dune node. Um, the settings are, I think, the default, except for a scale. I wanted some uh, quite big dunes, and then I put down a combine node with the max method and I combined the dunes and the erosion together and we get this result here. As you can see, the sand is going over the rocks. And then I put down a thermal erosion to accentuate the fact that uh, the sand uh, is co covering up the, 
um, the rocks and also to erode them more so this is before the thermal and this is after as you can see the rocks are uh, are more eroded and they seems like they are covered in sand okay so this is pretty much it for uh, the main terrain at least for the shape so i went it out um, and make the I made the second terrain from the erosion node i connected a zero border so uh, the terrain will be centered in um, in the center of the plane it will be in the center of the plane and without any as you can see here the terrain go over the edge and with zero borders so you don't have this problem and you can also make you um, you can also make an interesting shape then i connected an outer level to rise it up and uh, another erosion node more or less like uh, this one i just duplicated it then i made another dune setup i duplicated this one and combined the erosion and the dunes together so this is before the dunes uh, combined together and this is after then i i duplicated the thermal uh, erosion uh, bef of before and connected it together and that's pretty much it now the output the measure is to simply export the obj uh, mesh from the from gaia so i wanted to make the textures for uh, these two terrains inside Gaia and uh, so we are ready to render so I put a switch node a switch node is a particular node that you can find under let me scroll down here under utilities switch okay and basically you connect two nodes and you can switch uh, um, to what, whatever you like for example I connected the thermal of, of my main terrain and the thermal of uh, my um, smaller terrain the second one and uh, so if I switch them as you can see um, the viewport change because uh, I say to Gaia hey I want the main terrain or hey I want the second terrain so I connected the thermal erosion because it's the final result of both terrains then from the switch I started out with a surface air let me okay with a surface here that I connected uh, to the for the surface here I put the mode to trace because I get a nice grading there are a lot of other modes like uh, sprinkling um, peaks now it doesn't for some reason it doesn't update okay sliders apply and and so on but I found that trace is the best one I also put the strength to 100 then I connected a uh, set maps I simply choose a preset that I liked for the sand and then I jumped out 
um, to make the the texture for the rocks I connected a soil node to the switch uh, with uh, power to 13 graded because uh, uh, for the same reason for the shading I inverted it as you can see if you invert it the um, the grading change obviously I want it to be more in the upper part so I inverted it and uh, I put another start maps uh, with the sandy uh, library I uh, choose a preset that I liked and I mixed the two together then I wanted to make um, the, um, the sand I want to accentuate the fact that the sand is covering the rocks again so I made a snow node connected to the switch and this snow I connected the snow output to a blur because the snow is um, quite strong so I wanted to blur it out a little bit only 0.5 and uh, I also made another slope I wanted the snow to cover um, sorry the sand um, to affect only certain areas and this slope is connected to the switch okay and I, co I combine the slope and the blur together with a add method with 100% ratio so you get this nice effect where the sand is covering um, certain area based on the slope I advise you to put 100% of my ratio because it gives a more, um, I will say, um, precise result. Then I connected a um, clutter. Clutter is a simple gradient, as you can see here, and I use it for the coloration of the sand. Now, up here, <clears throat> I put another clutter to, uh, that is connected to the invert node of the um, that I used to um, colorize the, the rocks and this clutter uh, I use it to accentuate the crevices of the rocks I, I'll show you now this ah uh, sorry now now this is the final result of the uh, the rocks coloration and the sand without the um, um, the cavities uh, the the accentuated cavities and this is the result with the um, darker crevices it gives a more realistic look overall as you can see this is quite flat plain boring and this gives a nice contrast and as you can see I also affected the sand the dunes a little bit uh, this is uh, on purpose of course if you don't want to affect the dunes you can simply move the slider up but in my case I found it uh, quite interesting so I left it and then this is the final result I connected the mixer 
of the sender rocks to the first input of the final mixer. Then I connected the clutter of the um, covering sand to the second input and I masked out everything with the combined node of the, um, that I used for um, the sand that is covering the rocks. And the mixer is set to blend mode, 50%. Now, it's all procedural and I put a switch here so to export the, the texture for both terrains I marked for export the final mixer, the final result and then I can simply go to the switch and if I want to export the, the texture for the other terrain, for the second terrain I checked the um, the, the box here and I let Gaia recalculate everything and then I go to the build tab and export so this is it hope you enjoyed this uh, little breakdown I just give you an overall overview of what I did I didn't explain everything little um, uh, bit by bit uh, because it will uh, become a very very long video but if you enjoyed and uh, if this video has been helpful to you leave a like subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one Eyes in the sky gazing far into the night I raise my hand to the fire but it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true, baby, let the light